a very good day to you. It's just great to be with you once again. I want to speak to you today about spiritual, spiritual nurture, spiritual food. You know, that was Jesus' main concern for me and for you. Not so much our physical concern, uh, concerns, but our spiritual concerns is what brought him from heaven to earth. If we go in the uh, agricultural manual, if you've got it, please to um, the book of Mark chapter 6. I just want to read one verse, Mark chapter 6 and verse 34. And this is what the Word of God says. And Jesus, when he came out, he saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion for them because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. And so he began to teach them many things. Jesus' heart was moved with compassion when he saw you and I like sheep without a shepherd. You know, we used to grow, uh, grow sheep on this farm, and I, uh, I've learned a lot about sheep. Now, we, we're cattlemen here, but we also love sheep. Sheep, if they don't have a shepherd, they just go all over the place. They'll go into your fields where your wheat's growing and your cabbage and your maize. They, they just go all over the place. In fact, those are the, that's one animal that I'm scared of when we're driving down the highway and you see sheep that have um, broken out of their enclosure. Now, goats are funny enough. Goats are very, very wise when it comes to the road. You won't see a goat running in front of a car easily, but sheep will. They just run everywhere. We, like sheep, have gone astray, each one to his own way. Isn't it amazing how Jesus uses nature and his, 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 his creation to compare us with? He doesn't call us goats. He doesn't call us uh, cattle or horses. He calls us sheep. And uh, the Bible says that he had compassion on us because we were like sheep without a shepherd. I want to suggest to you that the Lord's heart and the, 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 the human distress of you and I is the main reason why Jesus came from heaven to earth. Folks, there is a tremendous physical need in the world today. People are hungry. There are people that are homeless. But there's a greater need in the world today than physical requirements. And that is spiritual requirements. There is a, a spiritual um, hunger uh, and uh, there's a vacuum in the world. People are needing spiritual food. And the only people that, that are going to help them is you and me. We really need to get alongside folk. You know, to, to give somebody food to eat is a, is a wonderful thing. But to give them spiritual food is what gives them eternal life. Now, when we had that big yellow seed sower, that uh, 20 ton Mercedes Benz 4x4, God told us to take the gospel from Cape Town to Cairo, in fact, to Jerusalem. When we were in Central Africa, going into areas that are regarded as unreached people groups, we saw people there that had nothing. They didn't even have a shirt on their back. And they were thin and they were hungry. And when we put the platform up and we put the lights on and we started to preach the gospel, we had clothes, we had food, and we had Bibles. I want to tell you, and this is the honest truth, come the end of the meeting, I said, we're going to give you a gospel a gospel of uh, John it was, each one of you as a gift from us. There were thousands and thousands of people. And my nephew was just a young man at the time. I remember clearly a picture of him taking a box of these uh, gospels away from the truck to give to the people because the people were starting to rock this 20-ton Mercedes Benz. And I thought they were going to push it over. No one wanted to be left out. Every single one of them wanted to leave that meeting with some scripture, some spiritual food that they could hang on to. And as, as he took this box of Bibles away from the truck to try and draw the crowd away from the side of the, the vehicle, he actually disappeared <laughs> in a cloud of dust. I just didn't see my nephew. And you know something? He came out of that dust. He was very badly shaken. I saw grown men fighting physically. It wasn't a pleasant sight to see because they did not want to lose out. They wanted a Bible. They didn't want the food. They didn't want the clothes. They wanted the Word of God. 
I want to tell you, dear friend, there is a spiritual hunger in the world today. You know, the Bible says clearly in Mark 8, 36, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? It's spiritual peace. It's purposeful living that people want. Often we get young men that will come to the farm and uh, ask if they can speak to me for a few minutes and they'll say, they're looking for a vision. They don't have a reason to live. They want something that they can get their teeth into, something that they can work towards. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 29, 18, it says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraint. What does that mean? It means if you aim at nothing, you're sure to hit it. That's what it means. It means if you don't have a game plan, if you don't have a reason to live, then you just give up. Cast off restraint. You see, if I had to say to you, young lady, that you're going to play hockey for your nation, you're going to get up early in the morning, you're going to start training like you've never trained before, or you're going to start swimming for your country, or you're going to be running for your country, you're going to stop eating junk food, you're going to start training yourself. Why? Because you've got a vision. Because you've got a goal. Because you've got something to get up for in the morning. And that's the same thing with me. What's keeping me strong and young is I've got a vision. And my vision is Jesus Christ. And He's, given a, he's put a call on my life. Not because I'm the sharpest tool in the shed, that's for sure. Not because I'm well educated, no. Not because I'm a youngster, but because... I have got a message to proclaim to the world. And what is that? That is, come unto Jesus and, and, and He will take care of every one of your burdens. Cast your cares upon Him because He cares for you. I want to suggest to you today that it's spiritual hunger, it, that a spiritual malnutrition that this world is suffering from at the moment. And folks, the only people that are going to tell them is you and I. I've always, I've always said in this program, haven't I? You know, the, the definition for evangelism, one hungry beggar showing another hungry beggar where to find bread. That's all there is to it. We need to tell people what Jesus means to us. That's what, that's what preaching is about. There's nothing more than that. Folks, you can go to university. You can come out with a PhD, a DD, a Doctor of Divinity, it doesn't matter. But if you haven't met the man from Galilee, if you haven't met the Lord Jesus Christ in a personal way, you're wasting your time. It's just another history lesson. And you know, most of the young people watching this program at the moment that are either at school or at university are sick and tired of lessons. They want reality. They want spiritual food. They want to get something that they can get their teeth into and to make a difference. Many, many years ago, I think it was over 35 years ago, my wife Jill and I went to a church meeting on a Saturday night in the church hall. And there were some people that had come from World Vision, a wonderful organization. And they showed a documentary on some Indian folk, I don't know if it was in Calcutta or Bangladesh, and these people were destitute. I'll never forget, they were camping around a pond, and that water they were using for sanitation, for drinking, for cooking, it was terrible. They were, they were sunken in the eyes, they were skin and bone, and my heart went out with compassion to them. But you know, when we had finished that meeting and we went home, Jill said to me, Angus, did you see their eyes? Did you see those poor folk, their eyes? I said, what do you mean? She said, there was nothing there. There was no hope. So physically, yes, they were destitute. They had hardly any clothes. They were skin and bone. But the worst thing was, there was no life in their eyes. They were spiritually bankrupt. Spiritually, spiritually destitute. I want to suggest to you today, start telling people the message of hope. Your hope is in God. It's not in your possessions. It's not in your health. It's not even in your family. It's in God. Because at the end of the day, that's all you've got. The day that you go home to heaven is just you and God. Everything else remains here. We need to start to have compassion like Jesus had on the spiritual well-being of people more than the physical well-being. 
Let me give you another illustration. I think it was about 15 years ago, I went to New Zealand with a wonderful couple. And we preached the gospel from the North Island to the South Island. And at one of the major cities, I can't even remember which city it was, I was taken to a maximum security prison. I remember counting the doors behind me as they, they took me right into the center of this prison. I don't know if it wasn't 10 or 12 doors. And right in the middle, there was a place that looked like an operating theater, actually. It was absolutely spotlessly clean. There were those neon lights that, that it was like an artificial light. Everything was clean and sterile, but there was no life. There was nothing. There wasn't a picture on the wall. There was nothing. And I sat down there and they started to bring in these inmates, these dangerous prisoners who were there for life. They weren't coming out. There was no parole. And these were huge men. Their heads were shaved and they had on their, um, their T-shirts. They were just bulging. They had arms, I'll tell you what, bigger than my legs. These were massive guys. All they were doing 24-7 was just working in the gym, probably just trying to waste away the time. They were physically massive. They looked like bodybuilders, every one of them. But when I looked in their eyes, friends, there was nothing there. They were absolutely starved spiritually. And I sat down there. I spent the whole day with them. We even had lunch together in that place. A couple of warders and all these inmates. There was maybe 10 or 15 of them. And they closed me in there and I started to tell them stories. I started to tell them about the, the mighty fish eagle in Africa. I started to tell them what the, what the eagle does, how he soars into the high places. And slowly but surely, life started to come back into their eyes. I could see that. Really, Angus? I said, yes. I said, boys, we're not here forever. I said, this life is so short. Eternal life is forever. I said, we've got to start preparing for home time. Then I started to see one or two smiles come on their faces. And all of a sudden, these men started to get excited. Then they started to write things down on their pads. And I started to say, your life can begin here. In this prison, I started to tell them about prayer life, about communicating with Jesus, about reading their Bible and how the Bible becomes the compass for the rest of their lives. I started to speak to them about faith, that faith has got feet, that when they start to trust Jesus, He'll change everything for them. I said, there's nothing impossible for God. And then they started to smile. They started to to laugh and we got hold of a guitar from somewhere we started to sing some choruses and I'll tell you what there was life in that place it was like spiritual food was coming down from heaven it was like manna from heaven just like the the Lord fed the two and a half million Israelites in the desert for 40 years and uh, when we left that day we were praying for each other there was tears of joy and they started to write to me letters of their visions their dreams they're going to believe for a miraculous parole. They're going to get out there. They'd like to get married one day. And they started to dream and they had a vision. I want to say to you, my friend, there are many bankrupt people in this world. And some of them have got lots of money. And they've got lots of food to eat. And they've got lots of possessions. But they've got nothing else. And I want to say to you today that unless Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life, you will never, ever be satisfied. You see, when the Lord becomes the focal point in your life, your marriage comes back together again. I met a young man just a few weeks back who's been separated from, from his wife and he's got two little children. And I can see his heart broken. That man has got everything that money can buy. I know that for a fact. And yet he's got nothing. When I started telling him about my family, my children, my grandchildren, my adopted children, I could see in his eyes. His eyes were sad. Oh, if I could only have that. And he can but it comes back to priority. You've got to get priority in your life. Now, Jesus left heaven and he came down to earth because he saw sheep without a shepherd. And if you look at that scripture verse that I read to you a while ago, it says, he was filled with compassion for them because they were like sheep not having a shepherd. So he began to feed them. No, it doesn't say that. Began to give them clothes to wear. No, it doesn't say that. He began to teach them many things. Folks, this life is but a vapor. We are going home to heaven to be with Jesus forever and ever. Now you're watching this program and you say, but Angus, I've messed up in my life. I've, I've been through a divorce 
or maybe my children don't want to speak to me anymore, or Angus, I've got terminal cancer, or Angus, there's no hope for me. I want to tell you there is hope for you, there's a future for you, and there's a thing called reconciliation. But you've got to reconcile yourself with God first. And once that happens, then you have to reconcile yourself with man. If you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, from verse 17, it says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Verse um, 18, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us, that's you and me, to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. My dear friend, you have a ministry of reconciliation. First between you and God, and then between you and your fellow man. There's the cross, you and God, okay? Me and God, and then our fellow man. There's the cross. And that's the reason why we're here. There's nothing else. And when you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, Matthew chapter 6, Verse 33, then all of these other things are added unto you. We are called to a ministry of reconciliation. Look at this, verse 20. Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. There it, there it is. And that's our sole objective. Jesus came down from heaven because he had compassion on our spiritual bankruptcy. These are like sheep. Sheep just go around in a circle, folks. Sheep without a leader are doomed. You know, I had a friend way back. Now I'm going way back. I'm dating myself to 1968. I was in Scotland. I was in an agricultural college. And there was a young man. I remember his surname, Macmillan. He was a Scotsman. He was a tall man, about seven foot tall. And he had to get special leave from the agricultural college to go back to his farm on the west coast of Scotland. Why? Because he was the only man that could bring the sheep down from the mountains to the valleys for where, where they were going to lamb down, have their babies. Okay? No one else knew the way. So he was off for a couple of weeks. He had to lead them down these steep paths so that they didn't go over the edge of the cliff, okay? Because when one starts going, the whole lot just follow. The whole lot, folks, the whole flock just goes off the edge of the cliff. That's a fact. Ask any shepherd watching this program. And so he went home and he went up that mountain and he went and collected all the sheep and he brought them down to the uh, farmhouse at the bottom where all the sheds were. Left them there with his old dad and his mom and then he came back to college. The Lord looked at us as sheep who had no shepherd. He didn't come down to, he didn't say to his father, I'm going down to earth, I'm going to go and show these people how to make money. No. Or I'm going to feed them physically. No, I'm going to teach them things, spiritual things, because there is no hope for them outside of the cross of Jesus Christ. I want to suggest to you like never before. You know, we've got so many things in society now. You just press a button, it all happens. I know I can send an SMS to the other side of the world and you'll, you'll get that SMS within two or three seconds. But you know something? When it comes to things of eternal life, when it comes to the peace of God which passes all understanding, when it comes to a purpose for existence, young people are searching. And that's why they're doing the most hideous things. And you know, folks, when I see these things and I see young people dressed up and their hair is pink and they've got rings hanging from their noses and their tongues, they've got studs in them and their ears. That doesn't uh, uh, in, other, in, in any other way put me off. It gives me a heart of compassion. I love those people. You know what they're actually saying, mother, father? They're saying, please notice me. I'm alive. I'm here. And they'll do anything, literally, to get attention because they need love. Now, God is love, the Bible says. He that has no love knoweth not God. For God is love. We need to start to love one another. Not preach to one another. Just love one another. Accept one another. Encourage one another. I love speaking to young people. You know why? Because young people have got soft hearts. Young people are still going to be here when a lot of us older folk are not here. And they need to be reconciled to God. And it's not going to be through preaching. 
It's going to be through lifestyle. It's going to be through washing of feet. It's going to be through example. It's going to be through acceptance. I'm not saying that we must accept immorality. I'm not saying that we must accept sin. Not at all. But we must accept people. Okay? So we don't judge the person. Okay? It's the sin that we can't accept, not the person. Okay? The person has been misled, just like I was before I met Christ. Be careful that we don't become judgmental. Jesus, when he came down to earth, where was he found? Come on, folks. He was found with the prostitutes. He was found with the publicans. He was found with sinners. He was found in the pubs. He was found in the eating houses. He was found speaking to people that even his own disciples said, Lord, you can't talk to that woman, man. She's from another sect. Jesus came for the lost. Okay? He said, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. And we need to do the same. You and I need to start concentrating more on spiritual famine than physical famine. You can give a man a plate of food and he'll still get hungry. But when you tell him about Jesus Christ, I want to tell you something now, folks, and he gets vision. He'll go and get food for himself. Okay? So we need to really concentrate on the spiritual man. I'm going to pray for you in just a minute. And I want to pray that God will give you a heart for spiritual poverty rather than physical distress. 90% of all sickness is psychosomatic. I'm telling you, folks, I'm not a doctor. I'm a farmer. Many people that I speak to, you'll find that they're in depression or anxiety and fear. It's because they have no assurance. They're scared. And then their bodies start to get sick as well. I want to encourage you to, to start telling people that there is hope, that Jesus Christ is in control, that nothing can happen without His permission to you. And I tell you what, there'll be a peace that'll come upon your loved one and they will be healed. Not only spiritually, but physically and mentally as well. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, what can I say? But thank you for coming down from heaven to earth. Thank you for being my shepherd and the shepherd of my friends watching this program today. Please forgive us for not listening to you. Please forgive us for always trying to do things our own way, just like those sheep that have gone astray, each one to his own way. Today, Lord, we want to start to obey what your word says. I ask you to give us a heart of compassion for those who are spiritually destitute today, so that, Lord Jesus, your love might prevail in this earth and that people will be spiritually fed as well as physically fed. I ask this in your precious name. Amen. God bless until the next time. Goodbye.